In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your website GDPR ready in just seven simple steps. Hi, I'm Ed Leake from Ad Evolver, and today I don't want to talk to you about the 100 page guide to the general data protection regulations. No, instead, I want to boil it down to seven simple steps for you so you can avoid that potential 20 million euro fine. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a legal professional, so if you're unsure about GDPR, please seek professional legal advice. Uh, the GDPR regulations come in this year on the 25th of May, and if you think it only applies to EU businesses, then think again. If you serve your website to anyone in the EU, including the UK, uh, then you are fallible to the GDPR regulation. So I'm afraid, unless you intend on denying access to all EU and UK citizens, then it does apply to you. Before we get into the seven steps to make your website ready, uh, and if you aren't 100% sure what GDPR is, I just want to run through, in a nutshell, the, uh, the key points. And because I want to make sure that this is accurate, I have got notes here. So the GDPR is written to protect EU citizens from privacy and data breaches, which is fair enough. The legislation specifies what personal data is, uh, regulates what can be done with personal data, i.e. your email, uh, your name, phone number, that sort of thing. Uh, it defines the role and responsibilities of controllers and processors, aka the businesses that have the data. Uh, it answers the question of what is considered consent, i.e. have you got someone's data and do they know about it? And finally, a cookie should be treated as personal data. Now, not every there's a bit of grey area here, but not every cookie is. However, to be safe, let's assume that cookies are personal data. With all that said, the golden rule when it comes to your website is think opt in, not opt out. To get people to opt in to your privacy policy, not opt themselves out. Okay, so let's go through the seven point checklist to get your website GDPR ready. Number one is your cookie notification and opt-in. You may have seen these on the internet, a, a slide up or a, a bar at the top or base of the website. This, the change here is though, that before you could imply that people were opted in if they ignored it or just closed it. However, any new person that visits your website now should click to opt-in. So they acknowledge that you have a cookie policy and they are happy with that. You know, okay, I accept no problem, whatever that button may say. But also on that notification, make sure that you do link to your cookie policy. And that's point number two, have a specific cookie policy on your website. So that should specify what you collect and why. But also if you use the third party applications such as Google Analytics, uh, that has a cookie policy of its own. So you should either at the very least link to Analytics's policy or take the specifics from their policy and say, these are the cookies that analytics uses. So you've got a fully fledged uh, cookie policy. And number three is to ensure that your privacy policy is up to date and uh, more filled out than the cookie policy. So the privacy policy will expand on the cookies policy, easy for me to say, by explaining to people what you do with the data, how you collect it, store it, um, also how someone can get in touch with you which is really important if they want to know what data you have on file. And perhaps just as important, they must be able to contact you to be able to delete all that information free of charge. So an email address, um, someone's name or specific phone number to call. Number four, SSL, secure socket layer. So essentially the, the green padlock in the top of your browser or some browsers um, if you use Firefox now, if someone visiting your, visiting your website uses Firefox, if you don't have an SSL, it actually tells them now that the website is unsecure. And I put it in air quotes, but to be fair, that is true. So essentially, SSL is good practice. Google likes them for organic rankings. And it secures, it encrypts the data that goes from your website to the end user's computer and back again. Even if you don't take payments, it's still best practice to have a, an SSL certificate. Number five, this is going to impact pretty much everyone. If you've got a, an inquiry or a contact form, there are a few key points here. The SSL supports this, by the way. Don't store the data unless you really have to. And if you do store the data, encrypt it. You also make, you need to make sure that your email service provider 
also has a GDPR policy. So if you use Gmail, uh, Outlook 365, so on and so forth, you've got to make sure that they're covering you as well because your website's going to get covered by your policies and work. Um, but then someone sends you an email and you've got to be covered there too. Now, if you print out your inquiries and your leads, i.e. their information's on a bit of paper, then you need to make sure that you shred that information as quickly as possible and don't store it. And certainly don't just chuck it in the bin. If you've got any forms, no pre-ticked boxes. So if you've got T's and C's, don't automatically tick it. The, the person on your website who su submits the form has to tick the box. They have to opt in to whatever it is. And don't bundle, which is a, a term for having multiple boxes ticked at once. You have to enable or allow the user to tick individual boxes. So for example, one might be accepting your T's and C's. The other one might say, I opt into marketing. You cannot have these ticked by default now. Um, and if you break down your marketing into telephone, email, whatever, break those down too. So they have to opt into each one, not opt out. That's really critical. So that was number five. Number six is payment gateways. If you take any kind of payment on your website, be it Stripe, PayPal, whatever it may be, one of the major uh, payment gateways, again, make sure that their privacy policy covers GDPR and in your privacy policy, you link through to theirs uh, to reference how they've covered you in, in their obligation. And finally, number seven is chat. Now chat's major, um, big adoption of, of chat widgets on websites now and again, these systems often store the data and people put their names in there, their email addresses, so on and so forth. So you've got to be sure that your chat provider also has uh, coverage of GDPR in their policy and in your policy, you reference it. Again, it's just, it's covering all bases. So it's just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And finally, that was the seven points, but there is a little bit of a bonus here. If you're unsure at any point, just delete the data. If you've got um, an old email list if, or whatever it may be, if you're not sure and you're not using it and you don't think you're gonna use it, delete it, it's the safest option. And that's it. Seven steps to get your website GDPR ready. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please stick a like on it or if you didn't, thumb it down. Any questions in the comments below and eh, if you enjoyed it, maybe subscribe.